Mellow greetings, everybody. I've got some big news. Burton and I are now official spokesmen for Taco Bell. Yes, that's right. You may have noticed in some of my earlier reviews that I was eating fast food. Uh, this was not a coincidence. I was secretly trying to attract the attention of corporate sponsors, and it worked. Taco Bell, here we are. And Burton and I just came back from a run to the border for a little fourth meal when we've been given our first ever corporate assignment. Demolition Man for the 3DO. Why? Well, because Demolition Man is the official movie of Taco Bell. Because, as we all know, in the future, all restaurants are Taco Bell. Lord knows it wouldn't mind a burrito. In fact, uh, according to my contract, all of my meals have to be Taco Bell from now on. I want high cholesterol. I want to eat bacon and butter and buckets of cheese, okay? Now, not many people owned a 3DO, but it actually had a lot of good games going for it, and it had hardware that way outperformed the Sega CD. It just had a really high price point. I do have to warn you guys, though, if you're expecting a review in my old style that's usually very angry with a lot of swear words, you might be a little disappointed. Now that I'm under contract, uh, Burton and I are going for a much more family-friendly approach. That means no more cursing, no more swearing, and no more killing hookers and concealing their bodies in a flaming oil drum down by the lake. And just to be sure, the doctors have upped my happy pills, and they've installed a negative reinforcement system in Burton, who will issue me a fine every time I say a curse word like fuck. What's the best? Well, anyway, it's not like I'm going to completely change the style of review I'm doing it. 30 bucks? Well, I don't know, it looks good, and it won the 3DO Award for Excellence for Best Design. And besides, it's based on one of my favorite Sylvester Stallone movies. In fact, it has Sly in it, in costume, and he's recording all original footage specifically for the game. Alright, he doesn't actually say anything, and he's clearly fake jogging in front of a green screen in almost every scene. But man, he's acting. You can almost feel the danger around every corner. Every fake corner. Demolition Man is set in the savage, violent, dystopian future of... Uh, 1996. Uh, you play as John Spartan, a Los Angeles cop also known as the Demolition Man. Because every time he enters a building, he leaves it like this. actually has a reputation for running out of buildings in slow motion going Phoenix! Oh! And really when your name is John Spartan, aren't you sort of destined to become a cop? Or like a porn star? Anyway, from here it goes to a gallery shooting mode and hey, so far this isn't bad. The graphics are decent and the controls are pretty responsive even if you don't have the light gun and trust me, nobody does. And the music is right out of a movie. I don't know which movie because this level sounds like I'm being attacked by Danny Elfman and Tim Burton. We come for your daughter, Chuck. Live the good life in the off-world colonies. Okay, so when and where exactly did Simon Phoenix manage to commandeer and equip a missile-launching battle zeppelin? Well, this is pretty basic stuff, but the presentation is actually... Alright, who the fuck is shooting me? Where? What the... There's nobody... Oh, there's a guy back there? See him? Here, I'm gonna point him out to you. See if you can see him. How about now? How about now? Can you believe that? That guy is microscopic! I know the screen is small, but I can barely see him on a 40-inch TV screen! Hey! That helicopter just cut me to shreds! How was I supposed to see that coming? I don't know why, but for some reason I thought the goal of this level was to get to the chopper. I just didn't expect the bad guys to have an attack helicopter. I thought it was a police chopper. You know, the one I jumped out of? This just pissed me off, because it's all just a rookie trap. There's no way to tell the helicopter's a threat until it's actually shooting you. And by then, you're already dead. There's no way to save yourself. You also wouldn't think that your handgun could destroy a helicopter. But luckily, your gun has a 45-round magazine. 
Which is good, I guess. Seriously, it fits right in with the whole action movie hero thing, because, you know, movie stars like Stallone never have to reload. <sighs> you know, I'm also starting to notice that I'm killing the same four people over and over again, too. I mean, hey, look, there's Circle Strafing John McClane. Jay-Z. Carlito Caribbean Cool. And the Black Jersey and Shades guy. Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Where in the hell did that guy come from? How did he get less than a foot in front of me without me noticing? What was he doing down there, boy? And sometimes there's two or three guys down there. They're lined up like circus seals. After a bunch of shooting stages, the game switches modes to where you fist fight Wesley Snipes. And this looks like it could be awesome, doesn't it? But, uh, this isn't the most natural looking fight I've ever seen. Actually, it seems really awkward and spastic and not at all realistic. But, hey, it's an action movie, right? Let's see how it went down in the movie. Okay, uh, bad example. I've seen a ton of real-life fights where the combatants did nothing but attempt huge Mortal Kombat uppercuts. Oh, right! This is the round where Phoenix and I just took turns kicking each other in the junk! Sometimes Phoenix just seems to zone out. He just stands there! Anytime you're ready, dude! No hurry! Well, come on! I'm waiting! Well, any freaking time now, sweetheart! Man, this guy is crushing me! Look at this, it's not even close sometimes! Frack! Spig! Oh, suck my Meevonks! This is one of the stiffest, most stilted and counterintuitive fighting systems I think I've ever seen. There's almost a full second delay between the time you push an attack button and get a response. And sometimes he moves too fast for you to even attempt a block, or he'll hit you if you even try. Why? Well, the book says that if you successfully block an attack, you'll immediately land a counterattack that hurts more than a successful attack. So now you're thinking, okay, good plan, let's try a purely defensive strategy since the defensive strikes hurt more. One problem, it doesn't frelling work! You have to either block high or low, and he never telegraphs what kind of attack he's going to make. If you just guess and hold down one of the block buttons, he always attacks the other way, and you get hit, and the low block doesn't stop the leg sweep. You have to jump that. So really, blocking is a one in three guessing game, or it would be if the blocking Zarking worked. Look at this! I'm blocking this! I, I'm blocking this! I swear to Zark one, I am frelling blocking this, and I'm running out of Goram TV curse words, and I sound like a complete de guitar. Hard. So, after dying a lot, I checked the instructions in desperation for any hints on how to beat this level because I have no clue. Maybe there's some kind of special attack or a strategy I'm missing. Okay, here we go. When Simon's health is completely red, he will loose. <laughs> okay, great, thanks. Good plan. Well, eventually, after like 20 tries, I just luck out and I beat it. In the movie, John Spartan takes the blame for all the hostages blowing up. But really, I have to ask, who's the more foolish? The fool or the fool who sends a fool called the Demolition Man into a hostage situation? What seems to be your boggle? My boggle? So, they freeze both you and Simon Phoenix. Phoenix somehow manages to get parole before Spartan, go figure. He escapes and he goes on a killing rampage. And since the future has become a utopia, and it's renounced all forms of violence and indecency, it's consequently full of pussy. Somebody put me back in the fridge. We're police officers. We're not trained to handle this kind of violence. So they let Spartan out to catch him once again. The next level is the museum, just like the movie, because that's the only place anyone can find guns anymore. Hey, I magically have a gun now! And now I'd like you to play this level along with me in a little game I invented called... What the f*** am I supposed to shoot? Okay, the first one's easy. Simon takes cover here, and he starts throwing grenades and taking shots at you from behind this exhibit. Everyone, what the f*** do you shoot? And no, shooting Simon does no good. But if you said, shoot the large and obviously marked crate of TNT, you're absolutely right! Yes, this museum keeps a crate of live dynamite just laying around, and instead of taking off half the freaking building, all it does is mildly annoy Simon. After that, he attacks you with a remote-controlled tank, which is also armed with live missiles and machine guns. Now what do you shoot? Remember, if you pick wrong, you're dead. Once again, you do not shoot Simon even though he's controlling the tank. You have to shoot the armored vehicle. 
I really have to question the function of a tank if your handgun can destroy it. But those two rounds were softballs. Now comes the lightning round. We're gonna separate the men from the boys now. After the tank, Simon takes over an armored vehicle rocket launcher and starts shooting at you. I want you to point your finger at the screen where I should start shooting. Hell, I'm even gonna give you two chances. Point two fingers at the screen. And if either one of them is right, you win the round. If you're pointing at the exposed head of Simon, WRONG! I know! That was my first guess too, and it was wrong the first two times I tried it. I guess I never learned. I guess I just thought since this was the first good headshot I've had in the entire level, 30 or 40 rounds to the skull ought to kill the guy. Nothing. Okay, maybe you thought you just had to shoot the actual gun a bunch of times, like in most other shooter games. Nope, shooting the gun is entirely pointless. Okay, now who of you tried pointing at the armored shield and tried to wear it down with a few hundred bullets? But once again, you are barking up the wrong tree. Well, now you're asking yourself, what the hell else is there? Okay, do you give up? Here, I'll show it to you one more time. The game actually does give you a clue. Here we go. Did you see that? Okay, one more time. Right there. The bomb and the plane moved downward when Simon took the controls. Why? I don't know. But that can't be what you shoot at, right? Well, guess what? It is what you shoot at. And when you hit it, it explodes. And for some reason, that scares him off. Stupid. All right, last round. And if you've seen the movie, this one should be easy. Simon flees into a room with a glass floor and hides behind an information podium. Now think fast. Point your finger at the screen at where I should shoot. In the movie, Spartan shoots this spike-shaped lighting fixture that falls and takes the floor out. So let's try that. Let's shoot at the very top of the screen. But look, it doesn't work. You just fell for the trap, because that doesn't work. So what now, pud thumpers? Oh, I know what you tried. You tried shooting at the floor, didn't you? Wrong. Oh, I know what you're looking at. You're shooting at the cannon, aren't you? Sorry, another trap. Wrong again. Well, maybe now you're thinking, maybe this is the round where you have to shoot Simon eventually. Again? No! So, guess what now? All you have to do is you have to shoot the podium he's behind. After a while, that knocks an electrical panel off, and you have to keep shooting the electronic innards. Every time you do, the lighting fixture at the top of the screen moves down a fraction of an inch. But when it's down all the way, then you can shoot the light and it falls. But it has to be all the way down. How in the name of Poseidon's giant engorged blue crank are you supposed to guess that, except through sheer dumb luck and brute force repetition? Simon finally falls to a lower level. Oh no. No, not another one of these fighting levels. No, please, God! And it's even harder than before. I think this is as good a time as any to mention what happens when you see the game over screen, because you'll see it a lot here. Oh, I'm so scared. You get one continue, and once that's gone, Stallone himself gets on the screen and just verbally destroys you. Here, just watch. Good, but I would say it's horrible yet terrible. Ugly yet disgusting. You suck. Sylvester Stallone just said I suck. That's surreal. And then you have to return to the main menu to the mocking laughter of small children. As if I didn't hate this game enough already, it's actively attempting to demoralize me. With schoolyard taunts, no less. But that's not all. Stallone has a bunch of other stuff to say, too. Hey, Puke Skywalker, use the force. Puke Sky- What are you, six? How'd you get that 500 holes in your face? Learn to eat with a fork? What does that even mean? Hey, Luke Skywalker, use the force. Oh, come on, you used that one already. Come on, is this the best you can do? It's clearly not the best you can do. What would you say if I told you I would rather watch Stop or My Mom Will Shoot and Cobra in a double feature than watch a single one of your half-hearted improvised attempts to rack your stupid caveman brain for a witty insult? I don't know. Thanks. The next stage is the worst, and I mean way worse, because it's the worst level in any game. The sewer level. Shit, I love that smell. Reminds me of biscuits and gravy. But it's actually my favorite because it's just hilarious. It's another shooting stage, but this time you have full control over your movement. So you run around this maze chasing Simon. The graphics are suddenly worse than Wolfenstein 3D, and you move like you're drunk. Now you never have to reload the gun, and the place is crawling with bad guys. But it's okay because they drop dead in one hit, and they're dumber than a box of instant potatoes. Holy shit! Stupid. Check out how many of them are willing to chase me around this corner into a waiting hail of gunfire. Wow. 
Wow. Maybe they're being fooled since the bodies vanish instead of piling up around the corner like they ought to be. Oh my god. Come on, one more, man. Make it 20. Make it 20. Do it. Do it. Stupid. It's not long before I find Simon, but there's just one tiny little problem. Just watch. And keep count if you like. What the heck is going on? Have I just gone completely insane? Am I locked in some kind of purgatory? He won't die! No, I'm serious. Shoot him hundreds of times, it doesn't matter. The man is immortal. At first I thought the game was glitched out or broken, but no, it's working. And then I thought, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But look, my score's going up. Clearly shooting him is a good thing, right? But he never dies. Ladies and gentlemen, you've discovered a dimension of stupidity. A dimension not of sight or sound, but the loss of mind. I have discovered the rare black hole of eternal, unending suckiness, from which fun can neither enter nor escape. You've fallen into the Infinity Hole. It's rare indeed to catch a glimpse of the Infinity Hole in a game this recent, but here it is. I thought we'd sealed it off once and for all after the dreaded Total Recall incident, but after struggling with this for 45 minutes, I finally, in desperation, once again turned to the last resort, the instruction book. The mission, use the strategic apprehension computer to reach the elevator that Phoenix has likely used to escape down to the wasteland. Reach the elevator? What in the f*** are you talking about? That's right, you don't kill Simon. All you have to do is find the elevator he used to escape the sewers. But wait, he hasn't escaped the sewers. He's right here! So what do you want me to do? I actually have to run away from the guy I'm chasing to find the elevator he used to escape from the sewers he hasn't escaped from yet. And your strategic apprehension computer is fucking useless too. All it shows you are the relative locations of bad guys. It doesn't give you an overhead map, and it doesn't show you where you're supposed to go. You just have to wander around until you finally stumble upon the exit point. The only thing it does highlight in another color is Simon, who you're supposed to avoid! Anyway, after all that, you find the elevator, you take it up to the surface, and now you have to chase Simon, who somehow beat you to the elevator, who was behind you, in a car. But at least we're changing game modes, right? Maybe you think this will be more fun. You know, it's pretty cool, a car chase. So, let's check it out. Buckle up. Oh, sweet Jesus, what the fuck? Oh, my God, ah! What the fuck just happened? Yeah, you'd better have the gas pushed down before the level starts, or you get butt fucked by every other car on the road, and you die instantly. And this game won a fucking award! Best designed my big fat hairy ball! Oh, shut the fuck up! Okay, now that I know that, let's get this chase on the road! Time for some epic driving, baby! Yeah! You have got to be kidding. Look at this. There are no obstacles, no turns, nothing. There's no incoming traffic. I'm not moving. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. I don't even have to look at the screen because there's nothing to oppose me. This is the most boring stage I've ever played. It's almost like they forgot to program a level here. They never move. I find this lack of stimulus to be truly disappointing. Once you finally catch up with the car after three minutes of this, you get into another fist fight on the hood of the car. <laughs> and actually, the sight of this cracks me up every time, but I know he's still gonna kill me. Hey, actually, I'm not doing too bad here. Got a shot in, I'm not... I... what, what the fuck is that? I ran out of gas? <laughs> God! Damn it! I hate this fucking shit! All that of Taco Bell is worth this! I can't even beat this guy in a fair fight. Now you want me to beat him with a fucking time limit? I said shut the fuck up! Come here! Well, I feel a little better, but I still can't get past this guy. I mean, he's unstoppable. I just wish I could remember what my old karate teacher used to tell me when I was still taking classes. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that? No, no sensei. Get him a body bag, Johnny! Yeah! Oh. What the hell? Why is this working all of a sudden? 
It's like he's totally defenseless, and now I'm sweeping the leg like a motherfucker. <laughs> this is just brutal. I just love how all the portraits get these really cheesy fake bruises painted on, even though I'm not even hitting him in the head. He's just bouncing all over the back of the car and not falling off. The last level is the cryo prison, which is just another level like the sewers, because that level was so nice it was worth doing twice, right? His access to cryo prison is about to defrost the entire multi-life away. Wait, if Phoenix is only now releasing prisoners, who the hell were the guys I was just shooting in the sewers with all the guns? Created a time paradox. Okay, so how many prisoners are we talking about again? 80. 80? I just killed 80 people in the last level alone! I also like how the cryo prison is built like a labyrinth with identical featureless walls and these really long hallways that lead to nowhere. And look there on the radar. A naturally occurring flock of henchmen. Henchmen have a natural tendency to gather in large groups to hunt and mate, but alas, as a species, we're born without any form of primitive survival instincts. Oh dear god, they're dying by the hundreds! Oh, the humanity! But after that, you guess it, there's another fight scene. You beat him, you drop kick his frozen head off, then you win, you get another personalized Stolonogram. Good job, you saved the town, you saved the people, you saved everybody, and Phoenix is gone. Bravo. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you killed like 200 people, you uh, saved the hostages, you beat Phoenix! And uh, you didn't even have to reload a single time. I mean, not bad, everything's cool. Oh man, I got it. Oh man, I've got the taco shits bad. So much for the three seashells.